Greetings to you all. This is your brother in Christ, Canon Ambrose Otien Weda, Esquire. I function in various capacities, including as a senior lawyer and advocate of the High Court of Kenya, evangelist and chancellor of the Anglican Church of Kenya, motivational speech uh, teacher, political and current affairs analyst, and a prolific author of legal books, Christian books, and motivational books. From our greatness school today, our greatness talk is on the theme, how to deliver an impactful sermonette, the 12 wisdom keys. A sermonette is a small sermon. Did you know that it takes people <clears throat> online less than 30 seconds from viewing your, uh, your, your video to decide whether or not to watch it through? Did you also know that 75% of people online are generally the age of 35 years and below? And did you also know that using the media online <clears throat> platform effectively requires special skills? The purpose of this video is to bring to your knowledge the secrets of online communication. Online world is a unique community. It's a unique environment. It is a marked departure from the usual church environment. In church, you have people, the faith people who believe in online, you have everybody it is like an open market place <clears throat> that for you to be able to charter yourself through and put in material that has an impact, you must adhere to certain standards, certain secrets. And this is what by the time we finish this video, you should be, have been able to learn the 12 wisdom keys you need to understand. When you and I were sent to preach the good news of the kingdom to all the ends of the world and to make <clears throat> the disciples. Jesus Christ himself said that he, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore be as shrewd as snakes or a snake and as innocent as a dove. That is the key that we need to know. One, the sheep is harmless, attractive. When a sheep appears where there are wolves, <coughs> the wolves run to it. The wolves run to it. Snake, God created the snakes. He knows that they have wisdom, focus, and they act stealthily. And when they sting, the sting is damaging. You are expected to move into the world like a snake, quietly, in a focused manner. And when you deliver the good news of the kingdom, the influence spreads like yeast in dove. Then as a dove, a dove represents purity, honesty, truthfulness. You go there like children, harmless. In other words, you are to adapt to the world. There's a difference between adapting and adopting. You go in, you become like one of them, and you function like one of them. In fact, this was the trick, this was the strategy Paul of Tarsus used to take the good news to all the parts of the world. He himself confesses and says, if you look at his letter to Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23, number one, Plan the salmonette. Jesus Christ asked, if you want to build a tower, don't you sit down and estimate the cost. That is planning. You must plan. What do you plan? You write down notes. You structure the salmon. 
you set a duration. The best duration has been 50, 5 minutes to 15 minutes. Nothing more, nothing less. Audience, you decide who are you going to address. Are you addressing age 1 to age 10? Are you addressing age 20 to age 30? Are you addressing uh, college students? Are you addressing ladies? Are you addressing the audience? You must be clear because the audience determines the message. Number two, you then must have a captivating title. You name the specific salmonet. The way I've named how to deliver impactful online salmonet. The essence of a thing is captured in its name. So you baptize it. Remember everything God did, he named them. He gave them a name. So you must name your salmon. The name should answer to certain specific criteria. One, it should be pointed. Two, it should be captivating. Three, inviting and relevant to the times. We are now facing fear about COVID-19 virus, pandemic, and so on and so forth. It should be pointed. If you are talking about hope, it is not hope generally, but hope in a pointed manner. Like hope in difficult times. You capture in a few words what you are going to talk about. It is a summary of the summonet. Number three, staging. We are talking about the environment. What is the background? You must have a clear background, a neat background, attractive background, a honorable background. You can't have a background where vehicles are moving, people are moving, people are yelling, and when people look at the material, they are distracted. Number two is dressing. You dress according to where you want to go. You dress according to the audience you want to address. You cannot address uniformly forever. If you are going to address young people below the age of 25 in college, you must dress in a way that when you walk in, they can see. When people go for weddings, they dress for the wedding. When they go for swimming, they dress for the swimming. When they go to the disco, they, they dress for the disco. It is good because people see you before they hear you and they will react to the way you look. Number three, there will be appearance. What is your pose? You are grooming. How do you look? There's a way if you look shabby, people dismiss you very quickly. What is your voice? Is it an inviting, assuring voice? Body language. Do you inspire hope? Look at your audience. In other words, you look at the camera, the way I'm looking at you. Then your audience, when they watch, they see your face, they see your eyes, and it gives you credibility. People tend to believe that what you are talking about. You know it and you believe it. Key number four, self-introduction. You introduce any titles you have then you introduce your name, the name as you are ordinarily known. Then if you have any decorations, you introduce that, any honors. You also introduce the office or offices you are currently holding. In doing this, you must display confidence because confidence cult cultivates trust. But in also doing this, make it short and quick. <coughs> Key number five, you now go to credentials. You've introduced your name, now you go to credentials. Credentials are qualifications, achievements, experiences, and qualities that show that you are duly qualified to make the statements or the, the, the sermon you are making the experiences, the qualities that make you worthy of trust or to be believed. 
give only credentials that are relevant to the sermon. For instance, you will see people who give what is called testimony. You have heard Paul of Tarsus. He himself, when he says, I was before not a believer. I used to uh, persecute Christians. Then I met Jesus Christ and I changed. That is a credential. You can come in and say, I am a young person's pastor and a counselor. So I understand these difficulties. It is the credentials that will give you leverage. People want to hear whether you know what you are talking about or you are just imposing yourself and you want to waste their time. Key number six. Have a clear theme. Have a subject of the sermonette. The subject is captured in the title. And the subject should be one. It should be narrow. It should be pointed. You look at some books I have here. If you look at this book, it is the life and ministry of the Right Reverend Dr. Joseph Otieno Wasonga. Life and ministry. Not as a sports person, not as a family. Look at this. Overcoming Crisis, The Secrets to Thriving in Challenging Times by Dr. Miles Munro. It's pointed. Number three, The Principles and Power of Vision. Pointed. Number four, The Impossible Task, The Right Reverend Stephen Kewasis Nyorsok. The Story of the Anglican Church Amongst the Pocot. Pointed. Look at Joseph Prince. Unmerited favor. Look at the one by Ambrose Otieno Weda, the ideal lawyer. Not just any lawyer, the ideal one, a category. Look at this one by Kuria Thu, the principles of marketing. Then it is the skill building approach. Look at this, it is called personal finance. What am I saying? You are presentation, your sermonette must have a clear theme pointed. Key number seven. Words. The book of Proverbs, they say, life and death are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Words are energy. They have power. Words can make, words can break. There are words for the family, and there are words for the audience. As an Anglican, I can tell you, when we talk about the creed, when we talk about hallelujah, when we talk about praise the Lord, we are talking in the family. When you walk to a mosque, when you walk to a marketplace, and then you say there's power in the blood, some people will be like, which blood are you talking about? Which blood is that? But when you talk in church, when you talk to fellow Catholics, Anglicans, Christians, they know about the blood. So there are words that you use in the family. Those words, you don't use them in the crowd. You don't use them in the marketplace. Language of the intended audience, you must adopt that one. If you're going to talk to the young people, you use the language. For instance, you remember Jesus Christ was using the language of those times? <coughs> He would give examples like the parable of the sower. That was an agricultural country. People used to plant seeds through broadcasting. Broadcasting is throwing seeds. The generation today did not see that. They do not know. So when you talk about that, they don't understand. They know about tractors. <clears throat> they know about Wi-Fi. They know about hotspots. They know about Facebook. So when you are talking to them, you use examples that are within their context. Use local and common examples and concepts. Avoid cliches, judgments, or discriminative words. In the time you talk, hallelujah, praise the Lord. All those are cliches. They don't add any value when you are doing matters online. You don't discriminate. We Anglicans, we Catholics, we Christians. 
you use words that are inclusive, words that give hope, words that bless. Key number eight, teach principles. Principles are fundamental truths, they are laws. Examples of principles are like love, giving, hope, faith. But there are also facts, you don't teach facts. Facts are like the tabernacle of Moses, the Passion Week, uh, things like uh, Easter Monday, Easter Tuesday, all those are facts. You teach principles, the power of faith in challenging times. Avoid reading long texts. You can paraphrase texts and then give the reference. I've seen cases where you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, from verse 1 to verse 15. You take almost five minutes reading. That has a negative impact. So please teach principles quickly, short. Number nine, key number nine, you start strong. People make up their minds within the initial 30 seconds. So when you open your speech, they quickly decide whether they will hear you or they will not hear you. That is why I said, you don't start with the long, windy prayers. You don't start with the long exposition reading of the word of God. You talk principles and then you say, refer. You will notice that a strong start, like an example is where you say, look, instead of saying, we, with faith in God, we shall survive COVID-19 pandemic. Somebody else says, even though we are afraid, we are walking through the valley in the shadow of death in faith. And we are walking through and we shall overcome COVID-19 pandemic. Somebody will then want to hear, how do we walk through and how will we overcome? So you start strong, powerful speeches, start strong because you capture the audience, people want to know next. The next key is meet the interest of the people. People want to listen to you so that they get something out of it. They don't want to listen to you because they love you, or they love hearing your, your voice, or they love watching. What do they get? In the internet is a spirit of what is in it for me. So, you are someone should be able to meet their interest. You should be able, for instance, when you have something like, don't tell them, have faith in God. I'll tell you what is he talking about. But you tell them, how through faith in God, they shall overcome fear generated by COVID-19 pandemic. Remember God gave promises. And we worship him because we want to go to heaven. We worship him because of the good things we want. We are not just worshiping because we love God. We are worshiping because of his promises. And we thank him for that. Key number 11, prayers. Please make short, clear prayers, which are to the point. One minute or less. Long, windy prayers on the internet becomes boring, becomes irrelevant, especially when they are punctuated by semantics and glitches. For instance, you are saying, oh, Jehovah Jireh, the king of kings, the creator of the heavens and the earth, you removed people from Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea, they did all these things. Those are glitches. Go straight to the point in less than one minute. Say, God Almighty, we are in your hands. You promise never to leave us, never to forsake us, to be with us always. And we thank you for the word we have shared. Bless us. Let the word grow in us. In Jesus' name. Finished. Do not offend people in the prayers. Do not be discriminative. Do not use words that offend. Repeat what you, are require, what you require people to do to achieve what you have taught them. Key number 12. The overall aim of going into the internet online 
is to connect to people. Remember God Almighty when he created people, when he created the earth and the universe. He said, it is good. It is good. It is good. It is when he reached the part of Adam that he said, it is not good for man to be alone. So we are created to connect. Your intention is to go to connect to people. For what purpose? The overall aim is influence. You influence by getting connected, getting linked. Your aim is to make friends, to win people, to become close to you so that you are able to fertilize them with the good news. It is not for you to harvest converts or to display martyrdom that you are a martyr for, 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 for the gospel. You are willing to die. You don't offend people. You actually attract them. In fact, Proverbs 18, 19 says, an offended brother is harder to win than a fortified city. And disputes are like bars of a castle. You don't offend people. The aim is to connect to them. You talk to them in a nice language. You attract them. Because you remember Jesus Christ? When he went to meet the Samaritan woman, he talked to her about water. Can you give me some water to drink? And they went step by step. He didn't go to him and say, don't you know I'm the Jesus the Christ? Don't you know I save people? Are you believing? He went step by step. The aim is to connect. Finally, in conclusion, Aristotle said, Aristotle is a philosopher of the, of the world. In making a speech, one must study three points. First, the means of producing persuasion. Second, the language. Third, the proper arrangement of the various parts of the speech. That is a respect of wisdom. If you find this video useful, please share it so that the fight, the movement online to take the kingdom, to take the world, to take the good news into the world, Go share it with people who are in this uh, assignment. Comment here so that we're able to improve on this and continue sharing. And also subscribe to my channel for more because the Bible says, iron sharpen iron. We grow one another. May God bless you and I wish you victory. Thank you.